Well, we know a lot about patient safety that we didn't know 10 or 15 years ago. 10 or 15 years ago, we thought medical errors occurred because people were bad. Doctors were bad and careless. Nurses were bad and careless. We now understand that most errors are committed by good people trying to do their best, and they happen because the systems don't work very well. Improve the healthcare system overall. Encourage better preventive measures and more effective infection control procedures. Such are the plans and actions being implemented around the world in the developed and poorest countries alike. These plans and actions are central to the discussion and debate at ICPIC, the International Conference on Prevention and Infection Control, which took place for the second time here in Geneva. The meeting also represents an opportunity to remind ourselves of the ongoing requirement for infection control, a need which came to light during the 1970s in the United States following the publication of a study on the usefulness of such measures. Five years of data collection and uh, ten years of studying and uh, the answer came out showing that infection surveillance and control programs are extremely successful when implemented vigorously, have a great impact on the nosocomial infection rate, reduce length of stay of patients, save great deal of money for hospitals, and prevent many patients from crippling or even fatal infections. So it turned out to be an astounding result that has had uh, implications ever since then. In fact, the entire imp implementation of infection control in the world has really been stemmed from that study. Forty years later, numerous proposals have been implemented around the world, thus demonstrating the necessity for infection prevention and control in all healthcare facilities. In 2009, we started the National Hand Hygiene Initiative with the plan that all hospitals, public hospitals and then private hospitals also, should, should uh, submit data on their compliance three times a year. And gradually that has got bigger and bigger. And uh, so now that we have, we have over 680 hospitals three times a year uh, submitting data and it goes through a validation process and then it's now put on a government website so that all patients in Australia can look up their hospital and see what the hand hygiene compliance rate is. Nowadays, hospitals, clinics and the medical community as a whole have adapted their practices for the benefit of both the patients and healthcare teams and continue to do so. As a further sign of this growing awareness, the paramedical specialities and also practitioners of traditional medicine, such as Chinese medicine, have likewise committed to these changes. Uh, I have started a pilot in the, um, in the TCM clinic in Baptist Hospital. Um, they, um, the increase in alcohol hand rub is significant. It's uh, already increased by 10 times. And uh, by observation, their hand, hand hygiene uh, compliance increased from 20% to 80%. So it's a good start, but uh, this needs to be expanded to other clinics, hopefully uh, throughout Hong Kong, then China, and then to the rest of the world. Initiated in 2011 by Geneva University Hospitals, ICPIC has demonstrated the necessity for infection prevention and control in all healthcare establishments worldwide. This gathering of experts, of individuals working in the field and decision makers is a tangible sign of the real momentum spreading across all continents to go still further, to innovate, invent and then reinvent the best medical practices of tomorrow. You know, previously we were just looking at campaigns and seeing how people doing it. But this time around, we're seeing lots and lots of innovative ideas from various parts of the world, you know, ranging from patient participation, staff participation, and even tap, tapping on interesting technologies and gadgets. I think that we've made great advances in, in recent years in terms of uh, preventing healthcare-associated infections, mainly by uh, improving adherence to the things that we've known have worked for years. We're just getting better at implementing them more consistently in the hospital. But there's still a role for innovation and, and new learnings and new techniques. Innovation is everywhere. We have an innovation academy, an implementation academy, and the projects that were presented are absolutely unique. So this is great to see that we are on the top of innovation for hand hygiene, but also we are on the of very simple actions in district hospitals in Africa, in Indonesia, in very remote places, very simple places where action works and infections are reduced and we are saving life. 
So between innovation and implementation everywhere, it's a great satisfaction for all of us, including the team that works so hard around me to make it possible.